Sheffield, a city synonymous with steel, innovation and a relentless spirit that refuses to be extinguished. Sheffield has faced numerous challenges throughout its history, including economic downturns and the decline of traditional industries. However, the city has constantly demonstrated resilience and determination, adapting to change and finding new innovative ways to revitalise itself. This spirit is reflected in the people of Sheffield, who possess a very strong work ethic and a never give up attitude. And that spirit is bringing back Manor Racing, who graced Formula One with their presence but failed to secure funding and ultimately faded away from the sport. But we're bringing them back. Join us for this My Team Career Mode, where we look to topple the big boys and get back to the front of the grid with that plucky little team, Manor Racing. So the first big decision as team principal is which powertrain we are going to go for. Now, back in the day, it was powered by Mercedes, but we have decided to go with the Red Bull powertrains. Obviously doing very well in real life, the Red Bull. And when these Red Bull powertrains comes in the engines, I'm sure it will be very good for us as a consumer team as well. 90 on the performance and 85 on the durability. Not the most expensive powertrain, and that's going to free us up with some money for our second driver salary so we will be a red bull powered car let's have a look now at that all important livery for our first season so here we have it then this is the livery for our first season at manor racing my word how good does this look the orange the white the blue gorgeous looking car we've got some new sponsors on the car as well we've managed to attract some decent sponsors delivery and rescale uh, shazam are also on there as well so this is a pretty good looking car and i tell you what it's going to look very nice under the lights in bahrain at that first grand prix so that is our first ever livery back at manor racing and so guys, you can see on the right hand side, our teammate is Ollie Coldwell, the British driver, plenty of pace about him. We wanted to get in a local lad and Ollie is the man we have chosen to join us on the grid in our Manor Racing team, this resurgence from the Steel City of Sheffield. I'm excited about Ollie, a lot of pace, good focus. He's had a good pre-season for this 16 race calendar that we're doing now. Let's just show you the calendar because that's important. We're gonna start off in Bahrain before heading to Australia. Then we've got Azerbaijan, Imola, the jewel in the crown in Monaco, Spain, Canada, Austria, Great Britain, Belgium, it's Italy, and then we go to Singapore, USA, Mexico, Brazil, before finishing in Abu Dhabi at the Yaz Marina Circuit. 16 races a season. We're going to keep jumbling the uh, calendar up as we go through the season. I'm hoping to make a really good storyline out of this and bring this to you on the channel. It's the first ever F1 series we are doing on the F1 games. So this is going to be a very exciting one. I'm excited to see what this car can do. We've had a good pre-season, I believe, so let's get to Bahrain for the season opener and see what Manor Racing can do. So just before we go into qualifying, just a little look at the R&D chart and where we are at the moment. So we are the second worst team on the grid behind uh, McLaren. So we've got Alfa Tauri just behind us. Alfa Tauri, the worst team on the grid. We're in front of them, then come McLaren and Haas. So it's quite close between us four at the bottom. Red Bull absolutely running away with it, as you would expect. Uh, Ferrari and Mercedes, so the two chasing and Aston Martin as well, and Alpine saw in between. So very much quite a, a scattered field to start off with, but we are very much in the battle with the Alpha Tauris and the McLarens before we go into this weekend. No more testing, no more practice. This is the real deal, and it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. There's no shortage of passing opportunities around the 3.36 miles of the Bahrain International Circuit, with the best, of course, at turn one, and then another soon after into turn four. 15 corners here, six to the left and nine to the right, and we could see one or two flat spots into that tight left-hander of turn 10. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. What a qualifying yesterday for George Russell. He'll start today's race from pole position. And the smooth operator, Carlos Sainz, completes the front row. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Verstappen, Perez, Leclerc, Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Ocon, Stroll, Norris, Bottas, Gasly, Oscar Piastri, Sonoda, Magnussen, Albon, Lewis, Sargent, Hulkenberg, Joe, Ollie Caldwell, and Nick DeVries. 
It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. And don't let him down. That we are hoping not to. Let's have a look at the race strategy. So we're going to start on the soft compound tyre. We are running 25% races throughout this season. So we're going to start on the soft compound tyre and then go on to the mediums. I think that's probably the optimal way to do it for us today. We don't really know what we're going to be like with tyre wear. There's a lot of unknowns going into this. As Crofty just said, testing is over. But we've got to see how we do running in the hot air of these other cars as well. So we're going to go soft on to mediums. Let's get to five red lights for our first ever Grand Prix as Manor Racing. So here we go then at the start of a new My Team series, the start of a new season. It's George Russell who is going to lead us away in that Mercedes. And Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez all up there as well. As we see Verstappen takes the lead into turn one. But let's have a look at how we're getting on. We are into that first one. A little bit of contact with Alexander Albon as we have to go the long way around the outside before getting on the power. We're side by side with the Alpha Tower of Yuki Tsunoda. But it's not a bad start for us maintaining Gaining the position actually in P16. Meanwhile, Ollie Caldwell, he's having a little look up the inside of, uh, of us, and it's both Manor Racing cars side by side as we go through turns three and four. That Manor Racing livery, my god, does it look good as we ride back on board wheels and we chuck one down the inside of Yuki Tsunoda into that tight right hander, then try and get on the power. We are struggling a little bit with traction as we are getting around this circuit early doors, trying to find the grip and we go very, very wide into that tight left hander, which opens the door again for Yuki Sonoda. Us and Yuki have been side by side most of this lap. Sonoda is on board, he's gonna get the better run with the slipstream, maybe showing he's got a little bit more power in that Alpha Tower as he does and manage to get up the inside and it is side by side with both of us and Ollie Caldwell just keeping a little look at what's happening in front of him here as we're coming towards the end of lap one. We go a little bit on the inside of Sonoda, but Sonoda has got P15 as we're coming up to the last corner. Magnussen is a little bit further back in P18, but we can see both Manor Racing cars once again side by side and Ollie Caldwell has overtook us on the first lap. Amazing work from him. Ollie Caldwell, we did say he got a little bit of pace and he's showing that pace so far today. Meanwhile, at the front, we can see as we go to the top of the leaderboards, Max Verstappen is leading away. Who else did you expect, in all honesty, to be leading this Grand Prix from Charles Leclerc in P2? Then comes Russell and Hamilton, Perez in P5. Norris in P6 in the McLaren, what a weekend he's just been having in Silverstone, Sainz P7, Alonso H, Stroll Knife and Oscar Piastre makes up the, the points paying positions. And on lap two, you ride on board with us, cockpit cam, and we are looking at the back of Oli Caldwell. I must say, I wasn't too impressed that Oli Caldwell was leading us, and we decided to chuck one up the inside of him, narrowly missing Yuki Tsunoda. A little bit more frustration than anything, but we do manage to get past our teammate there, and we're back up into P16 on the back of Yuki Tsunoda. And Yuki Tsunoda is looking pretty good in that Alpha Tari to say it on balance he's in the worst car on the grid. But as we're getting used to this car now, we've had a qualifying session. It wasn't the worst qualifying session in the world. We were pretty nip, nip and tuck with Oli Caldwell all the way through as we have a little moment there coming out of that corner and Ole is a little bit too far back to make anything pay but we are struggling a little bit we haven't got many upgrades on the car as you would expect being a little plucky little team we are at the back of this grid but we have gained a position on lap two the staff and still leads he joined his bike on lap three and we are looking forward rather than bike both that and Sonora have been fighting all the way through sector one as we make a little bit of contact with Valtteri Bottas. Looking to the left and right. We've tried this once already on Oli Colo as we shoot one down the inside. It's aggressive but fair. We do leave Bottas the room. And Valtteri Bottas, to be fair to him, has pulled out of that and let us go past. So we are up in to P15 making moves early in this, in this race. We are feeling more comfortable with a car. But it's got to be said, we're doing okay here. We're five positions off the points paying positions, but we're not too far back. We're keeping pace with everyone. I'm pretty happy with how things are going at the moment. One man that will be happy as well is Toto Wolf as we switch back to the front. Hamilton and Russell fighting between themselves 
Verstappen and Leclerc have pulled out a nice gap to the two Mercs. But Hamilton and Russell both fighting, but both in P3 and 4 and keeping the Red Bull of Checo Perez at bay. You join us back on lap 4 and all eyes are on Nico Hulkenberg. He's having a little battle out of the bike with Sargent and also Guan Yu Zhou. But he's very slow there and he's got a puncture on the bike left. And he's had a collision there. Now, that has pulled out a safety car. Now, let's have a look. We are just coming round the final corner. Safety car is deployed. We can see the yellow flags on the marshals on the right-hand side. Now, we are having to make a quick decision here. And we make a late decision to jump in to the pits. So, we're in for our first pit stop. Now, let's have a look. Is anybody else following us in? I would suggest Guan Yu Zhou is as well. But he's lost his front wing in that collision with Hulkenberg. We, we are in for our first pit stop as Mana Racing. Now let's have a little look at this. You can see we get a good look at all the team overalls there and we are going to go onto the hard compound attire for the rest of this race. We're going to come in early, go onto the hard compound and then hopefully the most durable compound we will be okay towards the end of this Grand Prix. We'll come back when we're back to green flag running. And coming on at two lap seven. Now it must be said most cars have pit. As you can see we're back up in 2p12 at this moment in time we are looking at the back of yuki sonoda which we're uh, pretty used to doing so far this season already one man who hasn't pit yet is the race leader logan sergeant now it would be a huge error if he decided to pit here as we can see the safety car is coming in this lap so he's given a bit of space to logan sergeant who's going to restart this grand prix but he's got max verstappen on at the back of him now let's have a look at what logan sergeant does here will he go now will he stay Will he uh, go most of the way down the back straight? We'll have a little look and it looks like he's coming in. He's followed the safety car into the pace. Max Verstappen retakes the lead of the Grand Prix on lap 8. As there's a bit of smog around the circuit. We've got Leclerc in P2, Hamilton in P3. We'll keep an eye on Lewis Hamilton who's looking at the uh, the inside of Charles Leclerc. Can't quite make a move done. He doesn't get the greatest exit at all there. A little bit of wheel spin as well on the exit. Not the best from Lewis Hamilton there. Perez in P4, Norris in P5 who I believe may not have pit yet. Alonso in P6, Albon P7, Albon in the Williams as well, Ocon P8, Piastri P9, Sonoda P10. We are a position away from point in our first Grand Prix. But as you can see, a lot of cars have gone onto the medium compound attire. Bottas has, has has Magnussen, Russell the same on the medium compound. We're on the hard compound. We won't be as quick in at this early part of this second stint, but it may come to us towards the end of the Grand Prix. Lap 8, I think we're in a rather decent position. Um, Oli Caldwell has not done brilliantly uh, from that restart. He's in P20 at this moment in time, but he has took his pit stop. So Ole a little bit further back and he's got Sainz only a few positions in front of him. Carlos Sainz and Russell now very much out of position. Lap 8. He joins back on lap 9 and we are keeping tabs on Yuki Tsunoda here until we've just had a massive moment coming out of turn 2 and 3. And that has allowed Valtteri Bottas pass. We didn't, we managed to catch the car pretty well there to be fair. Then we get a little bit frustrated, go on the outside of Valtteri Bottas and we just need to settle down a bit because as we can see, George Russell is on the attack as well. I didn't think we would be racing George Russell and the Mercedes today, it must be said. But we seem to have kept that at bay for the moment. The key point for me now is to keep hold of Valtteri Bottas and make sure we are in that DRS as we ride on board with George Russell who's in that much faster than Mercedes. But we do get a good look at the back of the Manor Racing and to be fair, it's nice to see a Mercedes stuck behind this Manor at this moment in time. Uh, as you can see though, we are struggling to keep pace with Valtteri Bottas. Remember, these hard compound tyres are not as optimal at the moment as the mediums which a few other cars have got on. So we've just got to keep tabs and we are burning the ERS to try and catch up with Valtteri Bottas. But we've had a scruffy lap here and it's not been the best from us at all. As we come to the end of lap 9, Verstappen is still leading and Verstappen and Leclerc once again are, are uh, dropping Hamilton in the Mercedes. He looks like he's got a bit of pace but not enough to keep up with the Red Bull and the Ferrari at this moment in time as we are now back in the DRS of Valtteri Bottas who hasn't got DRS. Let's ride on board with us here. As we look to make a move, we've got the DRS wide open. Are we going to be able to make a move in it to turn one? We don't. We keep it quite steady. Heavy on the brakes. Go around the outside. Uh, we are a little bit later on the brakes than Valtteri Bottas. And then Valtteri Bottas has a little wobble coming out of turn two. We back on that DRS again. Remember, he hasn't got that from Sonoda. But this is helping us defend from that Mercedes of George Russell. As we run wide, 
and Russell doesn't try the move on as he just tries to sit in behind as he must be getting very very frustrated in at that Mercedes lap 10 and on lap 11 we are back on board with George Russell who's looking at the back of our car and it's a little bit worrying to be fair I don't think we've got the pace to defend this as we switch to our on board and George Russell is coming down the right hand side of us we aren't going to be able to fight this and there's no point in us fighting this he's in a Mercedes he's on the softer compound tyre we may as well just try and stick with George Russell and hopefully he'll help us pull out and defend from Carlos Sainz. We must be said he's in P14 and catching all the time. Carlos Sainz in a Ferrari. Did we expect a man to be fighting a Mercedes in a Ferrari today? Absolutely not. It must be said though it's been a fantastic day so far for Alexander Albon. He's doing wonders in real life and at the moment he's hanging onto the back of Lando Norris. He's in P7 doing very very well indeed. Verstappen still leads, Perez is now up into P3 and Hamilton is struggling to stay with him at this moment in time but possibly the most interesting battle on track is this little battle that we're involved in in P13 we've got Russell and Sainz on the back of us, lap 11 and coming on to lap 12 that Ferrari is getting ever closer we are doing everything we can here to stay in touch with George Russell but we can see in the right hand mirror a Ferrari coming past us on the hard compound tyre we brake heavily a little bit earlier Sainz gets the job done, he's better on the brakes than us to be fair he's better on pretty much everything than us if we have a massive moment once again and that is going to lose us time to Russell and Sainz we are struggling for downforce in this car remember there's not too many upgrades on it. We are struggling at this moment in time to keep it on the track. And this is a really worrying time for us in this Grand Prix. Russell and Sainz getting away. Uh, and Magnussen starting to close in a little bit as well. It must be said in that half. Meanwhile, little check on our teammate, Ollie Caldwell. Down in P20. He's got Nick De Vries for company. As well as Nico Hulkenberg. But he's not having a bad Grand Prix, it must be said, Ollie. In his first race. And I must be said, uh, I'm quite a big fan of his helmet. He's got a, a great British flag on the top of it. He's really gone to town. Um, on this British racing team he's, uh, he's pulling out all the stops I like that from Ollie Caldwell um, will we keep him for a long long time maybe we'll develop Ollie Caldwell uh, let me know what you think down in the comments should we develop the driver should we look to sign possibly our way through the season a, a more established driver but if he shows this kind of pace I'd be quite happy with that uh, and all the way at the back is Logan Sargent who got the pit stop strategy absolutely he could not have got it more wrong Hulkenberg is in P21 after that earlier incident um, and we are still now it's two seconds the gap to Carlos Sainz. We're more now concerned about the gap to Magnussen in P15. You join us back on lap 16 now. It must be said, Yuki Sonoda is doing us an absolute solid here because what he's done, he's got involved in this fight with Russell and Sainz. They've caught him up. Obviously, he's in a much slower car. And if we look at it, this has caused the, those two guys to really lose time. And it's brought us back into the DRS of the Mercedes of George Russell. What he's also done, Pierre Gasly is on an absolute flyer. He said au revoir to Lance Stroll. I hope you like the bit of French there. But no, Pierre Gasly is now on the back of us. So we've got Gasly behind us. If you've watched my F1 manager save, you'll know how much I love Pierre Gasly. Uh, and we are now on the back of George Russell. Remember, these medium compounded tyres will now be going off. And our hard compound tyre, not so much. So we might have the better tyres towards the end of this race. Could we overtake a Mercedes? Who knows? Lap 16. And Carlos signs now. Lap 16 is getting very, very frustrated. But you can see, we can see how close we are to the points here. Carlos Sainz, he's getting the job done on Yuki Tsunoda on that hard compound tyre. He's away, and now I'm assuming George Russell, if we ride on board with him, look how close he is to this Alpha Tower. Yuki Tsunoda's having a little go back at Carlos Sainz. Can't quite make it stick. And meanwhile, we are just watching this happen in front of us. Uh, we're all on the, the back of George Russell. I reckon now Sainz will disappear into the distance. I can't see Yuki Tsunoda sticking with him. And we can see from our point of view, him already pulling that gap out on Yuki Tsunoda. But George Russell has got to get past him as well if he wants to try and get some points this afternoon. But on lap 16, it's Sainz from Tsunoda, then Russell. Let's have a look if George Russell can make a move down this next DRS straight. He's, he's got a decent exit. Sonoda, remember, has got the DRS now, though, to be able to defend. We're holding on to the back of this. Meanwhile, Pierre Gasly is getting ever closer to the back of our Manor racing car. Stroll is in P16. He's one point second back from this little gaggle of cars. But George Russell now all over the back of the Alpha Tower, which is squirming around 
in these high speed corners and now will George Russell be able to make a move here before the start finish straight let's have a look he's got the power he's gaining 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 Yuki Sonoda goes defensive to the inside George Russell round the outside is he going to be able to make the move into the start finish straight he has Sonoda's gone and now it's Sonoda he's up against us on lap 16 lap 17 and Carlos Sainz is into the points in P10 as you can see on the left hand side meanwhile Pierre Gasly is getting ever closer to us we defend it well, we give him some space, not tons of it, we do get the elbows out a bit and manage to defend that quite well I would say, would it hard and fair racing, I would suggest we're now looking, Yuki Sonoda has lost the DRS of George Russell, is this going to pave an opportunity for us to attack Yuki Sonoda and we can see just a little bit further up the road, Russell is in a right ding dong battle with, Ferrari, uh, with Valtteri Bottas, it's current Mercedes driver against former Mercedes driver, we have now dropped out of the DRS of Sonoda and we're doing everything we possibly can to get back in it, but let's have a little look at this fight between Bottas and Russell, Russell's past him now, Bottas will be latching onto that, but Pierre Gasly is looking ever so close to the back of our man a racing car and we are doing absolutely everything to get back into Sonoda's DRS meanwhile Lance Stroll's joined the party in P16 and it's got to be said Magnussen isn't too far behind as well in P17 it's going to be a real scrap for P14 but we are now burning ERS as you can see down on the bottom of the screen in the cockpit we are burning ERS to get back in that one second range of Yuki Tsunoda little check on Oli Caldwell as we keep doing he's within the DRS of De Vries down in P20 he's been fighting with that Alpha Tower all day much as we have with Tsunoda it's very much Mana versus Alpha Tower here in Bahrain and just a quick check on the front on lap 18 it is still Verstappen who's leading but Charles Leclerc is pushing him all the way uh, round this circuit and I wouldn't rule out a Charles Leclerc win here Checo Perez is up onto the podium Hamilton a little bit further back in P4 and so this is it then final lap of the Grand Prix and as you can see we are having a look at not only Valtteri Bottas but Yuki Tsunoda as well this battle for P12 is very much going to be a spicy one on this last lap and don't rule out Pierre Gasly who's struggling a bit behind us but we are looking now to make a move it looks like it's going to be free wide into the corner we're heavy on the brakes remember our tyre wear is a little bit better now than these two cars we don't get the greatest exit a little bit of wheel spin but we are up into P12 what a move as we chucked it down the inside got it stopped Picked up a few marbles on the way, I must be said, we were struggling a little bit with the steering to get the car turned. And now we have got one DRS straight to negotiate to hold off Sonoda and Bottas. As we don't quite hit the apex there, but we do get on the power. And now we are using that ERS to defend. And we can see Sonoda and Bottas behind us, both with DRS. But we are giving this absolutely everything of this Red Bull powertrain to try and maintain this P12. As we come into the final sector, two places off the points. If you'd have offered me that, I would have snatched your hands off. And I'm sure the team in at the Sheffield factory would as well. As we've got one more corner to negotiate. It's going to be Max Verstappen who wins the Grand Prix in P1. As we see, it's already through. Perez in P3, Hamilton P4. But back to our point of view, as we come round the final corner, Mana Racing, we're going to get a P12 on our return to F1. What work from the team, and we are very, very happy with that. Let's get to the podium. For the team from Milton Keynes, then, after a quality performance. Tell me, Ant, how do they manage to achieve this win? Well, time management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. So there we have it then, just as in real life, Max Verstappen wins the Bahrain Grand Prix, the opening Grand Prix of the season and it's a red bull one three i believe charles leclerc getting p2 congratulations to everybody at the team what a performance from max verstappen and so there we have it then guys max verstappen claims the first win of the season it was a fantastic win for him charles leclerc p2 perez p3 hamilton 
in P4, Fernando Alonso in P5, Alex Albon started 16th, finished in P6, driver of the day, as we look a little bit further back, you see us in P12, that was a decent recovery drive, we played the strategy just right there, and managed to jump a few cars, there's even an Alpine of Pierre Gasly, we had a very close battle with, as we saw there, Guan Yu Zhou in P17, and Ollie Caldwell in P19, probably didn't get the strategy call quite right, Ollie Caldwell, have a look at the standings, uh, not too much to say there. Um, just have a look at the constructors. Red Bull lead the constructors from Ferrari. I hope you've enjoyed that first episode. It's good to see Manor Racing back on the grid, is it not? Please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Sarah.